This will be a follow-up video for the one that I put out earlier. Hope all is well. Hope you all are having a wonderful day. This will be theoretical. Um, now we all know that in the interview with Chris McDonough, Don Wells makes the statement that once I knew she was gone, then I went to the top of the house, meaning he went up to the house on top of the hill. Let me throw a little theory out there to you, it's okay? And then afterwards, you give me your opinion in the comments. Let's start with Don going to work that morning. He drives down to the bottom of the hill, and there is a red truck wrecked in the ditch with law, law officer there and a four-wheeler and we know the story. So anyways, he goes on to work. So they go to the hospital, drop grandma off, go and she goes and picks up Hunter. They go to the pond. All this stuff takes place, including the phone call from Don saying that someone is on the property wanting to touch the kids. Now that's an odd way to put that, wanting to touch the kids. So was that a signal? that someone, the buyer perhaps, was there or that the setup was ready, that Candace had to be there at a certain time to drop Summer off. Because we all wonder why she changed her into the jogging outfit at whatever point. Remember, it was at 3.09 that she changed her into the jogging outfit, or before 3.09 when she was changed into the jogging outfit. Because 309 is when she passes by the sign right there, like five minutes before she gets to the house. That's sort of odd on a hot day. But, okay, let's theoretically say they go on to the house. She perhaps maybe drops Summer off at the shed. Maybe that was why she had changed the outfit. Maybe that's why she was so adamant about not letting Hunter go back to the house with her. They go on to the house. Time is up, 4, 4.30. She goes down to check and see if Summer is there, if they brought her back. No one brought Summer back. She freaks. She goes back to the house. Remember, Candace supposedly left the hill twice for 15 minutes each. Okay, the first time was to see if they had brought her back. The second, when she goes back up to the house, she's freaking out. So the story that Grandma tells about Candace freaking out and screaming, saying that the baby's gone, she can't find her, she don't know what happened to her, she's not there, she's gone, and it waking Grandis up. Maybe that story is true. And maybe that is the scream that Jody Sue heard. So it wakes Grandis up. They, you know, are in a dead panic. She calls Dawn, and 
tells him what's going on. Okay, then she runs back down to the shed to see if they ever brought her back. When she finds out that they have not brought her back, she calls Don again and tells him. Now, the phone that they're using to call the renter, buyer, whatever, on, if you'll think back to the Chris McDonough interview, when Chris asks them, you left the boys here all day by their self, and she says, oh, it's okay, because whichever, the, the second young, or the second oldest child had his phone. I always wondered, well, shouldn't the oldest one have a phone? Shouldn't he have been the one in charge in case something happened? If the second oldest has his own phone, shouldn't the oldest one have his have a phone of his own? But she says the second oldest one had his phone. So was the phone that they used as a burner phone, was that the eldest child's phone? And at the second, when the second time she left the hill and Dawn told her to get rid of that phone because that is where they could trace all the activity, did by chance Dawn tell her to get rid of that phone? Did by chance did she drive down to that bridge and throw it in the Holston River? And the reason she said the second oldest boy's phone and not the first one is because she didn't want to call attention to the oldest boy having a phone and now he doesn't. Okay, anyways, then when she gets back up to the house, she calls Don on a real phone and tells him the baby is gone. You know, they took an hour or so to formulate the plan of what was going to be said, what was going to be done. She calls Don, lets him know, and he, on his way home, swings by the shed because that's where they were supposed to have brought Summer back to. He wanted to make sure there was no evidence left there that they hadn't accidentally brought the baby back and nobody knowed it. And by chance, when he pulled up, he said his heart just sank when he saw the boys and his neighbor, Don, looking for Summer. Is that because if by chance the buyer had brought the baby back, then the boys or that Don guy would have found her by then? And when he saw they were still looking, he knew they had not brought her back. But he went on to the shed to check. Now, his exact words were, once I saw she, or once I knew she was gone. And it's just the way he said it in the wording. Once I knew she was gone, then I went to the house. Once he knew there was no evidence and the, and the baby wasn't there, then he knew it was safe to go on up to the house and talk to the police officers. I mean, I'm, that's the way I take it. I don't know how y'all take it, but that's how I take it. Once he knew she was gone and not still there at the shed. Now, I know that's what we've all thought from the get-go. But I don't believe anybody has ever caught that in that interview. Him saying, once I knew she was gone. Then I went to the house. So he was checking the shed to make sure she wasn't there. But what was the reason that she should have been at the shed? Because that's what he was saying. He expected her to be at that shed. Once he knew she wasn't there, then he could go on and talk to the cops. Let me know what you guys think of that theory. I mean, to me, it sort of all fits together. Maybe I've left a couple of things out, like, oh, maybe the fact that Candace saying all the weird things that she said, like, if I'd have only walked out there with her, or if I'd have known they were going to do that to her, those kind of things. Remember the first interview Candace did when she said, they wouldn't have done that to her had I been there. Think about it. 
maybe there was another phone call made from the people who got someone that said, hey, we've uh, found a buyer in another country. Or maybe something happened to Summer while the other people had her. And that's what Candace was talking about. They wouldn't have done that to her had she had been around. And by the way, if they had the phone number for the buyer in the disposable phone, in the burner phone, or should we say the oldest son's phone, and they got rid of that phone, could that have been a reason why law enforcement, whether they did or didn't, Don swears they did, Don swears that on their phones, they wiped everything from three o'clock on. Could the law enforcement have been wiping the phones so that perhaps they wouldn't have a chance to call the buyer and say, hey, you know, y'all need to get something done. Y'all need to get her out of here. Y'all need to do this. Y'all need to do that. This is what's going on. Maybe that's why they erased all the numbers off their phone after three o'clock on. Just a thought, guys. I don't know, guys. As I said, this is all allegations. This is theories, alleged, uh, not allegations, but alleged theories, you know, hypothetical situation. Please don't take any of this as fact. But think about what I've said, and then you let me know your thoughts on it in the comments. And I'll see you on the next video, guys.